Good morning, everyone. This is Jeffy Kennedy, author of Fantasy Romance and Romantic Fantasy. Here with my first cup of coffee, which is sadly empty now. Uh, I drank it all before I got the opportunity to do this podcast. Uh, But it is Tuesday, May 25th, and it is release day. Yay! And of course, I'm here at the end of the Mountain Gods, which is beautiful, gorgeous. I don't think you can actually see the lake behind me because of the glare, but it is there. And I didn't bring any of my paper books with me. We came down here yesterday afternoon because we have family visiting from Wyoming. Uh, first time we've seen them since well before the pandemic. But here is the promised queen. Woo, on my phone. And yes, my phone screen. Well, you maybe can't tell. I shouldn't tell you. My phone screen is cracked. I have to get that fixed. Uh, but woo, woo. There's my special effects. Are you guys impressed? <laughs> So, Promised Queen, out today. Very exciting. Uh, End of a mini era. But it's really nice to see it out in the world, see people celebrating it. Um, A lot of people uh, sending me nice notes about it. I love reading the enthusiasm. Um, I should share one with you guys. Oh, this is kind of cool. Uh, I'm just not going to show it now. It was like if I, um, the way I had my phone, let's see here. Oh, there we go. If it turns horizontal, it shows just the tiara. Isn't that cool? I think that looks great. Oh, and I can even like swipe it up so it's like tiara. Okay, we have to play this game. My hair is a little bit flat this morning. I didn't bring my, there. Do, do, do. <laughs> Okay, that's funny. Uh, what was I going to tell you I, before I got completely distracted by the crown on my phone? Uh, oh, I was going to read you some enthusiastic notes. Oh, and I've gotten more. Uh, Elsa started doing uh, some more cosplay. Looks great. <laughs> She's wearing this floral gown. Look at that. Isn't that awesome? I love it. So I can see that I'm probably much louder now. I had to do this Zoom interview the other day and for RWA, and I swear you guys, I I subtweeted about this. Does it count as subtweeting if I later say on my podcast what I'm talking about? (laughs) They asked me to do this thing talking about subgenres and that's a little mower thing on the golf course, the perils of being at a golf resort. So they asked me to do this interview, which was, let me just put out there from the goodness of my heart, uh, no remuneration. You guys know that this is like a thing for me. It's like, I don't mind doing things out of the goodness of my heart, but if you make it really difficult for me to do things out of the goodness of my heart, I get cranky. So they sent me not one, but two documents with instructions on how to do this interview. And I mean, it was, you guys, I have done a lot of Zoom. We all have, right? We've done all these Zoom videos. I did the podcast. We do all this stuff. And it like went through all of the settings and how I had to make the setting be. One thing it did have me change was my microphone input, which clearly, okay, I did, I did uh, need to improve that, but (laughs) uh, it was just crazy, crazy how much uh, stuff there was on this. And when I said something to the gal who was interviewing me, I kind of assumed that she was not part of, here we should make my Savoy thing show. There we go. Savoy. When I said something to her about I made some remarks saying, okay, well, that's a crazy level of obsessive detail. Uh, And then she didn't reply. And I thought, oh, maybe she helped put it together. And I fucked up. Would not be the first time. And when we got on then, sort of like in our pre-chat and everything, she was supposed to check some of the details with me because, like, this committee had put it together. And she um, she says, yeah, I apologize for 
uh, the amount of detail in that document. And I, and one of the things that I had like subtweeted about it was like the second line says, please don't be overwhelmed by the level of detail in this document. And I was like, you know, if they have to tell you, <laughs> please don't be overwhelmed. It's, that's a really good insight to perhaps that they do know that people will look at this and be overwhelmed. I mean, they even had stuff on there like, you know, because they want you, wanted it to be HD, high def, like that there's high def makeup you can go get. And it's like, <laughs> I am not running out, uh, especially two hours before the interview. But even if I'd had all kinds of time, I'm not going to go buy high def makeup to do this hour long interview out of the goodness of my fucking heart. Which maybe there's not a lot of goodness in my heart. Uh, <laughs> I don't, I, I, I know I, I'm cranky, but it was just so funny. And so she said, well, you know, I apologize for the level of detail in this document. And, and she said, but uh, you should have seen it before we whittled it down. I'm like, I'm what? <laughs> and she said, yeah, the original was 26 pages, 26 pages of instructions on how to do your Zoom interview. And she said, yeah, the, the guy who's like heading the project and helping us with this is a professor of, I don't know, digital media or something like that. And so, you know, it's like he apparently put together a research thesis. <laughs> it's, I don't know. It's an interesting thing. It's, um, you have to keep your objectives in mind. You know, it's like, are you putting this together to interview somebody for CNN. You know, I mean, I understand going for a level of professionalism, which clearly we do not do here at First Cup of Coffee. Just, you know, you guys are all here for that. Uh, you know, it, it was crazy. <laughs> you know, you, you go for a level of professionalism, but especially if you are not paying people. And, and this was for RWA. And so I'm, I'm hesitant to be too much on RWA's case because I've been a member of RWA for, you know, 13, 14 years now, 13 years. And RWA has given me a great deal. I've held all kinds of offices in RWA. Um, I've supported RWA through this, you know, this whole crash and burn and attempts to rebuild. But one thing that RWA is not being good at is they are not paying people. And I understand asking for volunteer effort to help a struggling organization, but then you have to be upfront with people and say, you know, here we are offering you this very small stipend in order to raise funds for the organization or we are asking you to do this out of the goodness of your heart. And we know that this is um, a big ask. I mean, I, I think that's part of it is that they're not seeming to acknowledge when they're asking for something that is quite significant. And, you know, it's like, really, you're going to send me a document that includes the possibility of going out and buying high def makeup. Um, <laughs> Uh, I, I won't keep complaining about it, but it's, um, and, and I do feel kind of keenly that perhaps I do have some conflict with being president elect of SEFWA and being a member of RWA. Um, I have never seen the organizations as competing. And so when people have told me that I have a conflict of interest being in both, then I don't feel like, I've never felt like that that was the case. I'm going to pause for a sec. Hold up. David came back to the room. I had to make sure that everything was okay. But now Mr. Mower guy is going. So I think I might pause again and wait for Mower guy to, to finish at least right out from under the balcony. Okay. So, sorry about that. I, actually, I know there's like no, no delay on your end, right? Oh, no, there wasn't. I was just all like it was quiet there for a bit. So um, anyway, one of the tenets of SEFWA is to make sure that money always flows to the writer. And so anything that SEFWA do, does, we always weigh whether or not we can do it 
by first looking at can we pay professional rates? And I really feel like RWA needs to um, adopt that tenant, that principle, that way of operating. So, uh, not trying to slam RWA because I'd really like to see RWA succeed, but I know, for instance, there's one program that I would have considered being a, a mentor guide for, and um, <laughs> they were paying slave wages. I, I shouldn't say slave wages. That's a, not a good term to use. But, I mean, you guys were not even talking minimum wage. It was um, a crushingly low. I think I figured out that I would end up making something like $3 an hour, if that. Um, I, and I feel like that's been kind of a thing with romance as opposed to other genres and maybe it's because so many of us are women but i feel like we tend to undervalue that we don't uh, insist on being paid what we should be paid compared to other genres um, you know and the thing is <laughs> it's not easy to insist on being paid and i do and i even feel kind of guilty i feel like a broken record you know talking about things i do for free versus things that uh, you know, like I'm paid a professional rate to do, you know, and maybe we shouldn't be embarrassed about that. So, and Ren, uh, here I am at Inn of the Mount God. It's beautiful. I've been posting stuff for release day. I'm going to have a pretty kicked back day. I'm not going to try to write on Bright Familiar. I'm just sort of letting it pause while I do family stuff. Uh, but I will be back here to... Uh, do the podcast tomorrow. Um, yeah, so I'm at like, I've, I've finished through scene five on Bright Familiar. I'm at um, nearly 70,000 words on it, I think. So I am a little bit behind at this point, but I should be okay to, um, to you know, meet my deadlines and get it ready for publication get it to the proofreader. That's my hard deadline, but I'd also like some of my beta readers to read. I will probably end up sending it to them with the ending not quite finished and then send them the ending. Uh, that's always a uh, stopgap approach. <laughs> I've done it more than once. It's an advantage of the way I write with being a linear writer that uh, the whole book can be done except for the last couple of chapters. And then sometimes it helps get that feedback to know where's a good place to pause, to pause, to stop, stop to complete the book. Um, when it's the same hero heroine, I do kind of feel like it's kind of a pause, uh, a beat until the next one. So, um, I'm being called to breakfast, so I apologize for the short podcast today, but hey, at least you've got one today. And uh, I am going to go eat breakfast. I will be back tomorrow. This was my coffee shop caramel latte. It was excellent. It was delicious. So I will remind you all that first cup of coffee is part of the Frolic Media Podcast Network, and you will find more podcasts that you will love at frolic.media slash podcasts. And I will talk to you all tomorrow. If you want to give a shout out to the Promised Queen, I appreciate it. And you all take care. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.